Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 14th of March 2022. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Consider the following statements with respect to Lake Chilika. Number 1. Mangala Jodi Birth Sanctuary is the core area of Chilika Lake. Number 2. It is Asia's largest coastal lagoon. Number 3. Chilika Lake boasts the highest single lagoon population of Iravadi dolphins in the world. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? According to this article in the Hindu newspaper today, the government of Odisha has proposed a ban on the movement of merchandised fishing boats in the Mangala Jodi area of Chilika Lake. This Chilika Lake is Asia's and India's largest coastal lagoon and world's second largest coastal lagoon. And this is located on the east coast of India in Odisha. Chilika Lake was designated the first Indian wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. Now about Mangala Jodi Bird Sanctuary. The Mangala Jodi is a bird sanctuary which is recognized as an important site for the conservation of birds. Migratory birds arrive here for roosting. This is located on the northern edge of the famous Chilika Lake. Is it the core area of Chilika Lake? No. Nalbana Bird Sanctuary or Nalbana Island is the core area of Chilika Lake. So statement number one becomes incorrect. Statement number two as we discussed is correct. It is Asia's largest coastal lagoon and the second largest coastal lagoon in the world. Coming to statement three. This statement is absolutely correct. See, Iravati dolphins are found in South and Southeast Asia. But Iravati dolphin distribution in the Chilika Lake is considered to be the highest single lagoon population in the world. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 2 and 3 only. Here's a task for you for today. Let me know in the comments section the IUCN conservation status of this aquatic mammal that is Iravadi dolphin. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements is or are correct? Number 1. Palladium is used to coat electrodes that help control flow of electricity. Number 2. Palladium is used in making multi-layer ceramic capacitors which are important to make smartphone screens and power circuit breakers. Number 3. Ukraine is world's largest producer of palladium. Why this question? This article in the Indian Express newspaper explains why and how could Russia-Ukraine crisis lead to a shortage in the semiconductors. See, the supply of semiconductors is threatened by the Ukraine crisis and this is owing to the supply of two key raw materials which is neon and palladium which are at a risk of being constrained because of the ongoing crisis. Why? Because Russia supplies over 40% of world's palladium and Ukraine produces 70% of world's neon. It is in this context that we've taken up a question on palladium. So what are the uses of palladium? See, palladium is used in nearly all electronic devices that is to make chipsets as well as circuit boards. Also, it is used in making of multi-layer ceramic capacitors which are important to make smartphone screens, stereo systems as well as power circuit breakers. And this palladium is also used for multiple purposes in semiconductors as well. Another use of palladium is to coat electrodes that help control flow of electricity. Now coming back to the question. Statement number one as we discussed is correct. It is used to coat electrodes that help in the control of flow of electricity. Statement number two is also correct. It is used in the making of MLCCs. Statement number three is incorrect because Russia and South Africa are the two largest producers of palladium and not Ukraine. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option B, 1 and 2 only. So here it is important to note that multiple trade sanctions on Russia could threaten to constrain the availability of palladium. Moving on to question number 3. Which of the given statements with respect to genomic research project is or are incorrect? Number 1. It is a research study initiated by India that is exclusively aimed at mapping and identifying the genetic variation linked to severity of COVID-19. Number 2. It aims to undertake whole genome sequencing of thousands of individuals representing diverse ethnic groups from India. Number 3. It is an initiative of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. What is the context? This explainer in the text and context segment of the Hindu newspaper today talks about genomic research project. So what is this? Genomic stands for genetics of mortality in critical care. 
it is a research study and the largest of its kind in the world that brings together various different scientists as well as doctors from different countries around the world to find the genetic factors that lead to critical illness. See, we all suffer from infectious diseases. But while some of us recover quickly, some may become extremely unwell and would also need critical care. And this genomic project is about identifying the genetic factors that lead to this critical illness. So as a part of this project, scientists compare the DNA of critically ill patients with the members of general population. Since the year 2015, the genomic research project has been studying the emerging infections and various different forms of critical illnesses. For example, SARS, MERS, flu and also other different forms of critical illnesses. Similarly, a study is also being carried out on COVID-19. And the team that is carrying out this study found key differences in 16 genes in the ICU patients as compared to the DNA of other group of patients. So what is the primary aim? The primary aim of this research project is identifying those genes that may explain different disease outcomes. Also, this study aims at designing treatments to avoid severe infections due to genetic factors. This research project will help in making use of new technologies such as CRISPR which allow the genes to be tweaked or silenced and therefore this approach could be used in making of new medicines. To know more about CRISPR, you can watch yesterday's daily quiz. The link to the video will appear on the top right corner of your screens. Coming back to the question now. Statement number one becomes incorrect because this study was not initiated by India. And also, while it did study COVID-19, this research project does not exclusively focus on COVID-19. Please understand that this is an open and collaborative global community of scientists as well as doctors who are trying to understand and treat critical illness. Statement number two is also incorrect because it is not restricted to Indian population alone. Statement number three again becomes incorrect because this was not initiated by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3 because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. Moving on to question number 4. Which of the given statements is or are correct with respect to National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority? Number 1. In India, the prices of all drugs including branded and generic are regulated by the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority. Number 2. It fixes the ceiling price of scheduled medicines in the first schedule of the Drug Prices Control Order of 2013. Number 3. It prepares the National List of Essential Medicines annually. What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about PM BJP Kendras including protein powders, immunity bars and other such nutraceuticals for its customers besides drugs and surgical instruments. And this article has a reference to the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority and hence we've taken up this question. Let us know more about NPPA as we discuss the answer. In India, the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority, which is under the Department of Pharmaceuticals, regulates the prices of all the drugs, be it branded drug or generic drug. So, statement number one is correct. Now, this NPPA fixes the ceiling price of scheduled medicines which are specified in the first schedule of the Drug Prices Control Order of 2013. But in case of non-scheduled medicines, the manufacturers are free to fix the maximum retail price. So, statement number two is correct. Coming to statement number three. See, the decision about which medicine are essential remains a national responsibility. And this will be based on various different factors such as the country's disease burden and priority health concerns and also the affordability concerns etc. So every few years, the health ministry itself in consultation with the experts draws up a national list of essential medicines also known as NLEM. So it is not the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority that prepares this list of NLEM. So statement number three becomes incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, one and two only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2020. Which of the following phrases defines the nature of hundi generally referred to in the sources of the post-Harsha period? Option A, an advisory issued by the king to his subordinates. Option B, a dairy to be maintained for daily accounts. Option C, a bill of exchange. Option D, an order from the feudal lord to his subordinates. So what is this hundi? 
Hundi is a financial instrument that developed in the medieval India for use in trade and credit transactions. So it was a note recording a deposit made by a person. So this amount deposited could be claimed in another place by presenting the record of deposit that is Hundi. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option C, a bill of exchange. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, National Technical Textiles Mission. What is the context? There is a reference to NTTM in this PIB article today and that is why we have taken this up for discussion. Before we discuss about NTTM, let us understand what technical textiles mean. See, technical textile is a textile product manufactured for non-aesthetic purposes, that is, they are functional fabrics. So the function is the primary criteria here. They are used in automobiles, civil engineering, construction, agriculture, healthcare and also industrial safety. See, since ancient times, India's strength has been traditional textiles as well as natural fibers globally. So, in order to make India a leader of technical textiles globally, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs or the CCEA approved the National Technical Textiles Mission. This mission would have a four-year implementation period from financial year 2020 to 21 to the financial year 2023 to 24. And for this mission, a mission directorate will be operational in the Ministry of Textiles. Also note that this mission has been set up in line with Make in India initiative of the Government of India. Let us discuss more about NTTM in slight detail. This mission has four different components. The first component being R&D and innovation. So in this component, the aim would be promoting both fundamental research at fibre level as well as application-based research in all the technical textiles such as geotextiles, agrotextiles, medical textiles and also sports textiles. It also focuses on the development of biodegradable technical textiles. Coming to component 2. Component 2 focuses on promotion. That is, different measures are taken to promote as well as develop the market for technical textiles. Component number 3 focuses on export promotion. So the aim is to ensure 10% average growth in exports per year up to 2023 and 24. And for this purpose, Export Promotion Council for Technical Textiles will be established. Coming to component number 4, which focuses on education, training as well as skill development. As a part of this final component of this National Technical Textiles mission, focus is laid on promoting technical education relating to technical textiles at higher engineering as well as technology levels. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.